This week, backed by popular demand, is the Bursa, who's taken up a new position as project manager. But before I start this project, I have to take the project manager out for a quick bathroom break. Sit. Now that he's let every other dog in this town know that this is his street, I pay him off with a treat so that he won't micromanage me Go on. and head downstairs to the garage. This week's video is inspired by watching a lot of YouTube and realizing, you know, the world needs more charcuterie board videos. The only other thing it needs more than charcuterie board videos are end grain cutting board videos. I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, it definitely does not. They're all over YouTube. But it's that time of year when the holidays are here and people start making gifts. And so that's what I decided to do. I'm gonna make a few cutting boards out of this, but mainly this video is around the charcuterie boards. I cut up these slabs into small blanks in preparation to take them to creative woodworking. I broke my planer in the last episode. In fact, I broke my planer trying to thickness these blanks to the right size and I ended up having to take all of these planks to creative woodworking, where they resawed them with a bandsaw in half and sanded them up to 120 grit. So here you can see each of the blanks is significantly thinner and I have a lot more than I left with. Making charcuterie boards becomes a bit of an assembly line, and I don't think I've ever built more than one of anything at a time, so a lot of this workflow is very different for me. I thought the thing I needed to do was to roughly mark out the shape of every charcuterie board that I was going to make on the board. And while it helped, I didn't really stick to the lines later on, and the sound of that pencil is terrible. I apologize. Uh, no, I don't. So while I didn't necessarily stick to these drawings all that closely, they helped shape the charcuterie boards. Oh, there it is again. Damn that pencil. It'll be over soon, I promise. I started to trim the blanks, you know, take off any of the rough edges, any edges with cracks, any bits of wood that I didn't particularly care for, and I allowed this to help me decide the shape of the boards. I used the jigsaw because I don't own a bandsaw, and a jigsaw worked pretty well to rough out the shape of a few of the larger charcuterie boards. I do believe I used every sanding machine I owned during this process, as it was one of the dustiest, noisiest projects I've ever worked on. Trimming the charcuterie boards to size involved quite possibly every saw I, or type of saw that I own also. I bounced back and forth between the good old miter saw, then to the jigsaw, then to the track saw, and back again. So here's the first of the sanders. I have this Ryobi belt sander, which is pretty underpowered and tends to stop if you apply too much pressure. I need more patience. Shocker there, right? In order to cut out the handles, I start by drilling some holes to give myself a way to get the jigsaw into it. And as you can see, I'm using my drill press again. So I think this was definitely worth the purchase. It's also super cathartic watching the drill create all of those little shavings. And then again, 
even more cathartic vacuuming them up with the dust collector. After drilling pilot holes in every charcuterie board, I then went through and made sure that the handles were exactly the shape that I wanted with the jigsaw. You'll see as we go through this, every board is slightly different. No two boards have an identical shape or an identical handle. This made everything a little slower than I had anticipated. This odd looking spindle, I think it's called an oscillating spindle sander. I scooped this around Thanksgiving because the local hardware store was having a sale and I mainly got it for this project. I haven't done too many things with curves yet and that essentially is what a spindle sander excels at. I'm sure I'll be using it much more in the future. I top up my spray bottled water with some water from upstairs and no, I didn't use bottled water. I just use the bottle to transport the water from upstairs to downstairs. I am not that fancy. Also, I would have used Evian. Just kidding. What I'm doing here is grain popping. So between different grits of sandpaper, spray it with water, it makes the grain pop and it becomes kind of rough. And then the next time you sand, you get a better finish. You also get to see a little bit of what the final color might look like. This whole process is pretty laborious. It's a lot of sanding, spraying down with water, waiting for the grain to pop, waiting for the water to dry, back to sanding and repeating while working your way through the different grits. And I went from 80 to 120 to 180 to 220 and I think I stopped at 320 if I remember rightly. And I water popped between every grit. Brutal. I'm filling up a lot of the little, what were, wormholes before it was kiln dried. There's definitely no worms left in there now. I found the easiest way is to use a CA glue and a little accelerator just because it keeps your work moving and you don't have to wait 48 hours or however long epoxy takes to cure. It's also a little easier to control when you've got a bunch of these little small holes that you can see here. This was insanely time consuming and I definitely huffed at least half the accelerator. So for some of this video I was high as a helicopter. Look at those knife skills, guys. I'm like a true pro, although cutting sandpaper grit side down makes it hard to move after you cut it, which is making me look like a total amateur. In reality, I am. Hopefully people that get these charcuterie boards don't know that. So these little paper strips are 220 grit and I did some at 320 grit. I cut these so that I could get them inside the handles because sanding the faces and edges of the charcuterie boards is pretty easy but getting inside those handles was proving to be a bit of a challenge. I clamp up the board then I go to town with the 220 and then the 320 making sure there's no sharp edges and that I've broken the edges on the inside of every corner because I'm going to attach a little leather lanyard so that people can hang them up if they choose to rather than store them in a drawer.
One final job to do before getting anywhere near finishing though is to wipe all these suckers down with mineral spirits. And if I wasn't high after huffing in all that glue accelerator, I was definitely floating after breathing in the fumes of some mineral spirits in a confined area. Okay, I promise I actually wore a respirator and had the garage door open as much as I could. Then it's on to finish. Finishing is super easy, just kind of messy. So you slather on a bunch of this walrus oil. It's made from walrus, not really. Walrus oil is food safe. It's mineral oil, coconut oil, and beeswax, I believe. It's kind of lumpy and gets everywhere. I did this upstairs where it's a little warmer, just cause the garage is colder than a witch's tit in a brass bra right now. Apply this liberally. Cover every surface, inside the handle, outside the handle, and make sure there's a little bit of excess on the board, and then place it on a drying rack overnight. Next, you're going to add some wood wax. I apply this the next day after buffing off the excess. So I'll apply this to the charcuterie board and buff it in with some scotch paper towel and then I'll leave it for 15 to 20 minutes before removing any excess. And essentially that's how I finish my charcuterie boards. As you can see, I got a sick pair of overalls as well. I'm really channeling my inner Waltons and little house on the prairie. Good night, John boy. Okay, after I've waxed, waited 15 minutes, and then buffed off any of the excess wax, I need to make the little leather lanyard that I was talking about. I grab these copper ferrules, ferrules, something like that. Uh, I grab one and thread the piece of leather through and then tie a knot on the end, which I do beautifully with my little sausage fingers. And then I thread the other end of the line back through and I tie a knot on the end of that. Although I did not do Boy Scouts, I'm pretty sure I could get a badge for some knot tying. Or maybe I couldn't, I don't know. Last but not least, attach said lanyard to the chopping board and voila, we have a finished specimen. This one I really enjoyed because it has some pretty unique grain between the heartwood and the sapwood. And then here are a few others that were finished for you to stare at. This little one I called L Paddle. Nah, not really. Until the next video, peace.